Okay, so this one's... We're so sorry. We actually received this, like, ages ago. This was, like, in September. Um, yeah, yeah and, two and months ago. <laughs> really apologize, but it is a great... 20-something cishet male revolutionary activist. I'm getting really into organizing politically with a group of young folks. And I was wondering, is it bad to have casual sex with fellow comrades? Is it bad for organizing? <laughs> have you ever done it before? Thank you, guys. Never. I would never do such a thing, would you? <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. It's just so sweet. It's such an, you're such an innocent soul. I kind of just want to cuddle you. I'm sorry, I'm not sounding patronizing, but it's just like, so I have this theory that I always say is just, so people get into labor, uh, get into leftist organizing, A, to get laid, B, to make a career, and sometimes the two intersect. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say one thing before I get into like how cute it is. You said you were 20-something, and then you said young folk. And so I just want to, like... Oh, age of consent. Not just age of consent, but also, like, being aware of power dynamics that come with age and experience in the scene. And so before I leap into, like, of course we shag our comrades, I just want to be like, how young are I they compared to I wish I didn't. <laughs> Sometimes. No offence, comrades. Yeah. <laughs> offence to some of you, comrades. Offence to some of you, comrades. <laughs> but, like, obviously, like, be aware of any power dynamics that might come into play with age and gender and associated things, also with being a long-time activist, is the like initial caveat of you identify the people you're organising as young folk but not yourself. Absolutely. And you've said 20-something, obviously being 21 and being 29 are very different things in terms of relating to young folk, whoever they may be. Is it bad for organising? Look, okay, so it is, I think, quite naive to think that uh, in, in, in a place of conflict and constant push, um, to, you know, constant sort of oppression from the state and in that sort of exciting environment that your hormones aren't up and you're not just sort of finding people that are in the same sort of solidarity and I guess wavelength as you are and you don't create um, I suppose intimate relationships with each other of course you do like so and 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 I, I I think, I mean, again, to be fair, there are some, and I know we're talking super Western activism here, you know, I imagine like, you know, in, perhaps in Orjava, they literally are going like, no, like, no, no, no encounters, perhaps, Do they? you know, I, I don't know, maybe I should know, but I imagine, you know, like, no, you take your struggle seriously and like, you don't, you don't fuck about, which to be fair, I get. I don't get. I, I, as you know, I'm a big advocate of politics of seduction, so I do think that social reproduction have to has to take place and also that like trying to divorce the personal from the political sorry to sound second wavy for a second is like just going to lead to people like ending up in like quite dodgy situations where they can't talk about it their comrades because they're seen as like diverting attention from the struggle yes but but you know like i mean but but that's okay so this is the flip side right as in you and me both and i think many of the people that are viewers of the show would have recognized in their organizing situations where um conflicts that have arisen from past intimate re relationships have destroyed movements absolutely but other things have destroyed movements too like police has what else assholes like, Asso is usually driven by some sort of jealousy. No, but I say the reason I left the scene three years ago was not because of an, an uh, 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 like sexual or like emotional relationship, it was because of an asshole ruining my life. So like yes. interpersonal dynamics are, are the bread and butter of movements, and that does include, in a very great extent, like sexual and like romantic ones, but it doesn't... But there's more to lose. But, mm, Yes. I mean, I literally just finished, I just, just finished reading this book about intimate, intimate partner violence in activist communities, so I'm going to be a little bit doom and gloom on this topic. Should we put right that now. in the in Yes, the it's called The Revolution um, Starts at Home, and it's very, very good, and American-centric for our American viewers. But it looks at exactly how the community is responsible for interpersonal dynamics and how interpersonal dynamics affect the community, which looks, it looks at both sides, and it's very interesting in... Like, yeah, no, it just, I guess I've, I've been burnt, and I think about collectives where that got completely eaten from the inside because of their misconduct, like sexual misconduct, you know? And, and for that reason, I completely see why you would just want to like have a blanket, no, don't get involved. So. Right, but that's it, right? It's sexual misconduct. And my worry, if there was a, sure. a blanket, don't do it, the doing it will still happen, but people can't be open and talk about it. Like not Correct. talking about, about relationship issues is one of the most toxic things, which is why we're doing this show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Correct. No, it's like you can't stop. Right. It's like the same thing about like you know Christian schools. You won't stop having kids having sex. Totally. What you can do is give them protection. Yeah, and the forbidden fruit is mm. oh so so 
back. So yeah, if someone said I couldn't sleep with everyone on the scene, I would make it my point to sleep with everyone Absolutely. on the scene. <laughs> I mean, I'm making my way around my own small little collective. Bit by bit. <laughs> to be honest, there's this band, my favourite band. Mm -hmm. in the, yeah. yeah. Again, as uh, well. Did you? you <laughs> well, wait, that was like, I didn't know no, that. like two, two out of four. You know? Really? Well, Not bad. I want to say two. Oh, two out of four, and the third one, like always, try. But I was like, no, that's too much. Three out of four is like mm. over the line. That's true. That's about seven of us regulars. So I've got, I've still got some way to go. <laughs> 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 but I mean, in all seriousness, yes, you have to be incredibly responsible if you're um, dating on a scene. And you, I miss that, this show. <laughs> I really have. This is great. But the thing I want to um, focus on is you mention casual sex explicitly. Mm. So it's not that you want to start a relationship with someone of these Good young point. folk. You want to shag them, which is fine. And we have nothing in casual sex. We love it. But casual sex is all about both parties being on the same page from where it begins. And if you are not responsible in how you approach casual sex, then yes, you will probably fuck it up. And aftercare. Yes. Absolutely. That's something that Rowan has been, has really actually taught me about a lot in the past year that we've been doing this show. Something that I've always thought, but I was never able to vocalize, you know, that feeling, the guilt that you feel yeah. after you've been with someone. And it's because your partner didn't do the aftercare. Yeah. Particularly if you're a dude, and particularly if you haven't said, but particularly if people are yeah, women. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um... If they're women and you're a dude and you're older and they're young folk, then you need to be fucking careful in how you treat that because she, if it's a she, may well end up, and also if it's a he, but someone younger than you, particularly if there's a power dynamic, may well end up feeling used and dirty and all this shit, even if you both go into being like, oh yeah, high five, casual sex, we're so like rad. Like, you know, we all think we're so rad, but also sometimes like it turns out we've been conditioned to feel like cheap and shitty and Absolutely. gross after having casual sex and it's your responsibility to make sure they don't feel like that. A hundred percent. And you know, also like, what do 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 you tell the group or do you not? You know, like is it is it is it your secret or like for instance you then pretend in front of everyone else that it hasn't happened or stuff like that. Yeah, you know? don't treat someone like don't shag someone and then the next day like blank them at a meeting. Oh, oh, and again, been yeah. have, have had that done to me for sure. And if it's going to be a secret, then you both want it to be a secret because it's yes. cute and sexy, yes. not because you have said to them, don't tell anyone about this because of your cred or whatever and. Yeah, oh, God. It's just, it just comes down to consent and respect, like everything, like, go into it on the same page, if you're sure it doesn't want to be anything more than casual sex, then you need to say that up front. It's just so wild, because this was like a really big part of my life, like, a couple of years back, was that sort of full-time activism, lifestyleism, mm. and boys, you know, and it was just, it's so fascinating that people kind of, like, vocalize it, as in, like, is it okay, or is it not, and I wish I knew all of the stuff that we we're talking about back then, you know, because... Boy. I wish my dudes were thinking about it, to be honest. Yes, but I mean, you know, I was also a mess and, like, loved it, but I also, but, I mean, yeah. I mean, we were all irresponsible. I was literally irresponsible a year ago when I did yeah. what I did, you know what I mean? And I think of myself as quite a, like, woke feminist, caring for everyone, like, social responsibility, emotional labour type person. Well, we fuck up too, is basically yeah. our point. But, um, but basically, yeah, I guess aftercare and pre-care and during yeah. care. <laughs> and, like, even if it's... Ah, uh, I, I want to reread the question because I feel like there's... And also, fuck it, have fun. Like, make sure yeah. you treat them to, like, you know, some incredible experiences. Again, like, it's... You're, you're 20, like, when I was... Oh, I so relate. 20, I don't know. No, 20-something. Again, it's really vague. Oh, is it 20-something? Yeah. Oh, cool. But so anyways, it could be anything you could remember 29. this period for the rest of your life, especially if you are, you know, creating revolutionary actions with people that you're, like, you know, find attractive with. This is the time of your life. Use it well, mm. ha enjoy it, but be responsible. Uh, fucking have fun. Yeah. I'm getting really into organising politically with a group of young folk. Is it bad to have casual sex with fellow comrades? No, but be aware of power dynamics and, like, responsibility and aftercare and just general care and not being a dick. Uh -huh. Is it bad for organising? Can be if you don't do all the things we just said and end up making someone feel hurt and betrayed. Also, uh -huh. even if you do the things we just said, someone might also end up feeling hurt and betrayed because that's just how things go yeah, sometimes. Yeah, no, be aware. Like, that was, again, in one of our previous episodes, I think we talked about, like, is it too close to home to, like, um, you know, shag your friend's friends or whatever? And, uh, yeah, there will always be someone that's probably a bit upset or will create drama or gossip. Yeah. Just be prepared for that, about that. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done it before? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, we have. Very cute. 